Jeff, if you'll allow, I'd like to do the honors here. This is you and your dog Stash uh, coming to us from Red Oak, Iowa. And uh, how old is Stash? Stash is just a four-year-old. She was actually a nursery dog last year. So this is really her first year in open, Jimmy. And uh, as you can see, she looks a little different than most of the Border Collies we've seen out here. Stash is a Blue Merle Border Collie. Um, every once in a while, whether it's one of you or one of the other guys picking on me, or uh, somebody who just doesn't know will ask me uh, how old my Australian Shepherd is. She's not an Australian Shepherd. She's a, she's a Border Collie. She works like a Border Collie. And uh, one of the things I appreciate her appreciate about her is her nice outruns that she's uh, showing us here. As I recall, you, you and Stash have about 255 points coming into this run? That's right. We right. had uh, dropped uh, 15 points in the second go-round. Uh, and so we we had 120 points scored there, score there and 135 points, a full, full run on the uh, first day. Now it looks like that second group of cattle that we're letting out kind of down in the flat Looks like they kind of came up the hill to join your first bunch. Did you, when you were behind the line commanding stash here, did you see that as an advantage or a disadvantage? Um, you know, it, it was probably um, the way it worked out a disadvantage and not necessarily that they came up the hill, but how far down the course they had come. As you can see there, uh, they, uh, I got them regrouped or, or grouped originally, not very far from that, um, first set of fetch panels. And so as a result, when they came off that berm so close to those fetch panels, they caught a lot of little bit of speed as a lot of the groups of cattle are, have been wont to do. And we weren't able to kind of get them slowed down before they got past that fetch panel. We got five of them through, but uh, coming in with just 255 points, I knew that Stash and I were gonna need almost all, if not every single point out there. Um, to try to, to place as high as possible um, with her. So uh, we had a breakaway there to the, to the exhaust, but she handled it nicely and uh, um, gets him turned around here. Um, Stash isn't a real forceful dog. She's one that, that likes everything to go easy and kind of has a, a pretty light touch on her cattle. Now what were you, what was going through your mind here uh, having to deal with this single course? Again, it's, it's not as much about how fast you do it, but time does play a role. We've seen some handlers run out of time. Uh, were you thinking this had cost you critical time? Well, I, it, it was a possibility, you know, and it is burning minutes here that you may need, or even seconds that you may need to make that exhaust gate or, or get finished up. Um, you know, there'd been full point runs, both uh, Dorrance and Kayleen had run full point runs uh, previous to me, so I needed, to, I, I needed to be, knew that I needed to be patient enough to go back and, and pick these 30 points up on this fetch panel. And probably also, I mean, you've had it happen in runs before too. Sometimes if you have one that's wanting to go back to the exhaust gate and go back to the exhaust gate, it's a repetitive thing. And I'm hoping here too that, uh, that that's a one-time deal and uh, we, we've got them grouped nicely here and everything's pretty quiet. And uh, fortunately that was something that, that tended to hold together through the run. Um, you know, Stash never really um, sped them up or, or jazzed them up too much, which was a good thing because they were pretty patient with us uh, through the rest of the course. Well, and honestly, some of the mistakes that, uh, that, that we made and she made through the course didn't really make us pay very badly because of, of her light touch and she doesn't rattle her cattle. They seem to have dropped a, a couple of gears here compared to what they were and, and it wasn't what she did as you said coming off that big levee right close to that panel it, it didn't do it wasn't going to do anything but accelerate the cattle coming right. off off of there and, and uh, her her quiet way of handling the cattle has made a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if she were pushy and a little bitey, uh, between then and now, we'd, we'd see a different set of cattle. Here. Right, they would, you know, that one that wanted to run off would probably be wanting to run off even more. But she's, uh, you know, like I said, she's got a really nice light touch on the cattle, you know, outruns really well, um, and is a, you know, is handling things really well. This being her first year in open, um, after a good nursery year last year, you know, and, and my other open dog is, uh, 
you know, in my mind, coming into the finals and, and still is probably the superior dog, doesn't is a little more solid on some of these things. Here we see a little minor mistake of stashes. And in, in dealing with that, I, I call her here to me, which is a, a crutch that you use when you're teaching your dogs to drive that I hopefully, you know, leave behind by the time a dog's running open. Um, but you're going to see me use it here uh, multiple times just because Stash is wanting to go to that balance point on the far side of the cattle and not wanting to, to take that new balance point or that off balance point that I'm trying to communicate to her to take the cattle in another direction other than directly back to me. Um, and so I revert on this young dog to back to using that crutch, come here, come here, um, that I normally wouldn't want to use on an open dog. They ought to have an understanding of flank around you know, the direction I'm telling them without me calling them come here to me. So, but it's, it, it got us through the course and uh, here we've got things stuck on the fence. And so, um, she's gonna have to get them pulled off there somehow. Well, you know, a dog like Stash has the same abilities as any of the other dogs, maybe just not the experience. And she may run into situations that, uh, in this run that maybe uh, she hasn't had happened to her enough times to know exactly how to handle it and you've got to you've got to do what you got to do a while ago on the on the approach to that drive you at one point you had three bunches you had yeah. one in the lead and one hanging back and some in the middle and she and wasn't sure which group to take exactly so, yeah. it's like do we want all of these or just mm -hmm. the, just the big ones you know so uh, so between you and her uh, it looks like it was handled real well because you're about to score full points here on this I think I've got to come back and daylight these cattle. There we go. Came back and daylighted those cattle, and then kind of a, a strange thing happened. It really didn't affect the run. Um, but uh, you'll see in a minute here when they go through this panel what happens. But uh, I've found, too, that a four-year-old dog and stash certainly hasn't had the time trialing in as many trips around the country doing this. And this will be about our... Uh, sixth or seventh day here in Steamboat. There it went. There we go. That panel, uh, that's that panel must have been jarred loose a little bit or something by a previous competitor, but it, it hit the ground there. That's one way to make your opening <laughs> a little wider there. Yeah, yeah it's, a real, it's a real wide obstacle, but uh, the cattle really went through where they were supposed to and uh, just moved on and uh, really didn't affect the run, which was fortunate for us. So. But as I was saying, Stash doesn't have the experience in the trialing miles. And so I think a long trip like this a week, um, living in a dog box, not staying at home, not in familiar surroundings is a little bit stressful to, to her. You know, I thought that her best run of the week was her first run. And um, I was happy with her second run too. I kind of made a, a calculated um, guess to, forego the 15 points because of time and go ahead and get, our, get the rest of the points on the course and was pretty confident that that was going to get me into this final go. Um, and so, uh, yeah, her previous two runs, I felt like she actually worked better than she did in this final r run, although it, it got us through the course and uh, it turned out well. But uh, here I'm struggling a little bit because Stash wants to go to that backside of that cattle and would really like to bring them back to me. Um, and we're having a little bit of an argument here. She's not real sure that she wants to come around what we would call on an away to me flank to her right to get behind the cattle um, to the left as you see it on the screen and push them toward that second set of drive panels. You know, uh, an experienced handler that I had a lot of respect for one time said that uh, a lot of people want a fast dog because the fast dog will get them out of trouble, but his his uh, opinion was that he wanted a slow dog because the slow dog wouldn't get him in trouble. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I think that's exhibited here. Yeah, it, it, to some people watching, they'd say this is, is slowed down a little bit, but look how settled the cattle are. Uh, the cattle are being quiet, and we're going to get them going here, and, and I think that's going to be very beneficial at the end of the run. Right, and the issue that Stash and I had right there was one of kind of obedience and communication. We weren't quite on the same page, and it just took a little bit of a conversation there to get on the same page. And now she, uh, she is back and, and driving where I want her to. Um, the thing that, like you said, saved us is that her light touch on the cattle, her being out of position didn't move them because she 
she reads that flight zone so well and she put herself a little bit outside of it and so didn't move the cattle offline even though she was in the wrong, wrong spot. Good point, good point. Okay, it, it, we're looking good through the cross drive panel and, and now we come back to, to more at hand work. Uh, do you find that uh, in your experiences, uh, when you can get those young dogs back in closer to you, that things tend to go a little oh, better? Oh yeah, if you're back in their neighborhood and they know, you know, that they're not feeling the stress of the livestock being a long way from you. You know, those young dogs, they get out there and uh, they feel like the remedy for, for whatever situation is to bring everything close to the handler. And uh, when she gets in close, she listens better and uh, is, is going gonna, is gonna to do a lot better. Now, unfortunately, those cattle wanted to break a little bit, and you're having to deal with the draw of the, of the exhaust here coming back to this corner. Uh, yeah, and you know, that's something that Stash, I wasn't really worried about her. She tends to run pretty cool, the heat. It was, it was cloudy here at this point of the day. And, you know, you say that about a, a slow dog, and that's a funny thing because while Stash has a really light touch on her cattle, she has as much foot speed speed as any dog I've ever had. Right. She can really run out, but she tends to not get tight, and she's not too pushy and shovey on things. So uh, she keeps her cattle calm, but when you send her around, she she can really run. Right, she can she can cover her spots, but but her approach is not a, a hurry up right. type of approach. Right. She, she gets there fast, but she handles them gently. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, this is looking good. The cattle, you know, and I think again testament to the dog and and the training and the handling. Uh, the cattle were drawn to the area they've been wanting to go to all week, but because she stayed in that flight zone and, and showed her presence, the cattle respected that and turned off. So you got out of the corner without a fight. You were able to go back to the T shoot, have a clean load and a, and a clean exit to that to that T shoot. Uh, so it looks like it's going well here. You got to be feeling good well, at thank this point. You, yeah, and at this point, yeah, it's just a little bit of that time that we'd burned early. You know, I knew that we had to kind of get through this portion in a pretty workmanlike fashion, but I'm happy with how she's working now, and uh, and yeah, going to take my time and, and do this right. Um, you know, at this point, I don't have time to be in a hurry exactly. and and mess something up because I I try to shove a thing shove on the cattle too hard to to make them do something that they're not ready to do. I get my second one and my third one. Cattle have really settled. I tell you, my, uh, I'm sure you've experienced this too, and anybody else uh, that uh, has dogs can testify to this. But you can have cattle that are a little bit spooky to both uh, handler and dog, and after working them with dogs a little bit, they just seem to accept people a whole lot better than they used to. I agree, and it, you know, I think working them with dogs has the effect lots of times of actually shrinking their flight zone. And so they're not so sensitive to movements around them of something that they perceive as a prey animal that might get them. Exactly. You know, they've learned that that animal's out there, but they don't have to get all stirred up because it, you know, they haven't died yet. And so they're, they're willing to kind of think about things in a little more rational fashion and, uh, and and do what makes sense as long as you and the dog give them time to think about things. Okay, nice clean load and, and you've decided to take the left side or, or what would be the south side of the sort box to do your sort? Right, and, and part of my, you know, we have a no running rule and so the draw of the cattle is going to be back towards the viewer or to the north there and so my viewpoint is put the dog on the pressure side and where things are going to happen fast mm -hmm. and then put me on the no pressure side where I can just make that cut and here Stash and I are kind of flanking them back and forth I kind of made a mistake there and stepped into a hole a little bit earlier too early to make the cut and shoved that one by and then as long as Stash takes care of her side and I'm sure that she is and holds the pressure there I'm going to kind of be able to step in there and put a little pressure on that calf and bump him out of the corner. Exactly. It looks like it went well. There she goes. 
Okay, at this point, you've still got some time left, so there, there should be enough time to go ahead and exhaust these cattle. And, and I do, and you know, at this point of a course, all the tricky work is done. Since you know the cattle want to go to that corner, you know, um, you can kind of take a little bit of a, a deep breath and uh, see that, you know, the, the tough stuff is done, and you just need to take care of these last, uh, this last exhaust deal here and make sure everything goes smoothly and, uh, and, and just cleanly. You don't have to be in a hurry with it. It just has to kind of get done in a timely fashion, and we should be out of here with full points. Of course, at this point, there's still some good dogs to run. You didn't come in with full points, and there were a few dogs that did. So, but you still had to feel good at this point about where you were at. I did. I was really happy with it. You know, with Stash's, this is her first open finals. Um, you know, I was, my goal with her was to make the final and then have a good showing with her. To be perfectly honest, coming to Steamboat, that I was going to maybe win a national champion with ship with Stash wasn't really even on my radar with her. Like I said, my other open dog was one of the dogs to finish with full points both runs. And, you know, it was a pleasant surprise that uh, Stash ended up coming up with the win. We were visiting with Jeff Mundorf and his dog Stash. And we missed Jeff and Stash uh, when they came off the field earlier, but we now know that they are the new National Cattle Dog Champions. Jeff, congratulations. Thank you, Jimmy. It's pretty exciting to be here in Steamboat Spring and Springs in beautiful Colorado and be able to compete on this course with all the other handlers. And we just feel really fortunate that, uh, you know, things went well for us today and, and lined out. We ran at a really good time of day, you know. The sun's come out and then the clouds have come out. We even saw a little bit of lightning to the south and uh, the cattle worked a little different depending on the weather conditions. We kind of got some still air and some clouds and uh, you know it was cool and the cattle were real relaxed and, and that definitely helped us around the course but Stash did a good job too. You know, she's, Good. Great. Well now I understand there's some other people that are just as excited about you winning this. There are. I have good friends uh, Nate and Amber Wood from Elkhorn, Nebraska and uh, they uh, actually own Stash on her papers, and but I've had her with me since she was a year and a half. So I've had her with me for the last two and a half years, and you know, um, but really, really feel blessed that they've let me have her and uh, and trial her and be able to compete with her. And uh, you know, like I said, good friends, and uh, you know, good things have happened. She's a nice dog. We've had. Uh We've had a, a lot of good competition here this week. We've had people from all over North America. Uh, wouldn't you say the quality of dogs was as good as we've ever seen? Absolutely, absolutely. The quality of the dogs has been excellent. The quality of the work, I think, on the course that we have out here is, is better than any, anything I think any of us have seen at a cattle dog trial. You know, the cattle were really, really excellent, and it really allowed us to show our dogs to the, to the best abilities that you can possibly see. Well, Jeff, once again, congratulations on you and Stash. You earned, earned every bit of it, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all running here again next year. Thank you. We sure will be back, Jimmy. Uh, great. Thanks. Uh -huh.